So part one on relationship with Jesus was all about giving you an insight, a little peek of my life, a little peek of who I am. And I shared a little bit of my heart and soul with you and how I was raised and how far I got away from my relationship with Jesus and what it took to get me back with Jesus Christ. And I know it wasn't it wasn't uh, real easy. <laughs> I know that God was like, wow, I know she's going to come back someday. And I just thank God that he never gave up on me, right? Aren't you glad he never gave up on you? He's not giving up on you. No matter how far you feel like, wow, I've just gotten so far away from the Lord. He's never going to listen to me or help me again. But you know what? He is. He is listening and he does care. And he's always right there. He's always ready not just for me, ready for you to come running back and saying, Abba, Father, Daddy, God, forgive me. I want a relationship with Jesus Christ again. And you know what? Um, somebody was just uh, sending me a cute note today because in part one, I was talking about how I was the one who walked away from Jesus Christ. I was the one who broke up with him. I was the one who divorced him, and it wasn't a plan. It wasn't an official, I divorce you, but my actions, words, thoughts, and deeds divorced me, cut me off from the Father God, from Daddy God. It cut me off from my blessings that Jesus Christ wanted to usher into my life, and the Holy Spirit just could not operate because why? I was absent. I was the absentee um, spouse um, from God. You know, we're all called God's bride. We are the bride. He calls all of us brothers and sisters his bride. And he is the bridegroom. And so, yes, one day we will be meeting our bridegroom, our Jesus Christ in heaven. And um, it's just going to be a glorious day that wedding feast in heaven. You always hear me talk about the RSVP prayer. It's because it is your invite to heaven, to the wedding feast. Going back to going steady, I was, you know, as a young kid and a teenager, going steady. My heart belonged to Jesus. And I used to sing in church and uh, with my sister, we would sing, we were raised on gospel songs. Our daddy is still and was an evangelist he's just in heaven uh probably evangelizing to everybody in heaven regardless if they if they know it or not my daddy is up there telling everybody how much he loves jesus so um yeah my heart belonged to jesus at one time really strongly and i got away i broke up with jesus i gave him the ring back not physically but you know what i'm talking about you know where i'm going here so in a sense, yeah, I divorced my Father God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Not meaning to, not trying to, I just did. Because like any person, any relationship here on earth, if you're in a relationship and you ignore that relationship and you never talk to them and you never want to spend time with them, in fact, you trash them, bad talk them, you just really cheat on them, you lie, whatever, guess what? They're just going to go away. They're going to go away. So if you don't nurture, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you don't nurture that relationship, if you're not going steady with Jesus, if your heart does not belong to Jesus Christ, he'll go away. He's not going to go away forever if you originally devoted and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, he'll just be removed from you. He'll go away until you're ready for him to come back. Does that make sense? I hope I'm explaining this. I don't want any of these radical fanatics going, what do you mean he's going to go away? I think my audience, you, the viewing audience, is intelligent enough to know and read between the lines what I mean by if you ignore 
anyone or anybody if you ignore Jesus Christ. He will remove himself from your life until you, until you decide you want him back in. You want to, you want to be going with Jesus again. You want to be married to Jesus. You want your life filled up with Jesus Christ. I'm excited to talk about the one I love so much because I know some of you girlfriends of mine and some relatives, when we start talking about the new love of your life, and some of my male friends are like, Lee, I'm in love. I'm getting married. She's so it. She's my person. Isn't that what they say these days? She's my person. Or I broke up with him because he's just not my person. Well, I'm happy to talk about my person, Jesus Christ. He can be your person too, but he's much more than just your person. He's your savior but he is the love of my life. And I just thank you for those of you who are watching and continuing to stick with me. So <clears throat> I just wanted to share a few other things about my person, Jesus Christ, my savior, and why I'm so maybe radical, fanatical about him. I was witnessing to someone a while back and witnessing, for those of you who don't know what that term is, I mean, just talking it up, talking about my person, talking about Jesus. And um, they obviously do not believe in Jesus as the Savior. And I was trying to talk without defending and, I mean, talk without offending and listen without defending, if you know what I mean. So... It was a real cool analogy, what the Lord had told me, that um, he told me to share with you this. That one reason, like I told this person, I said, I do seem a bit fanatical about Jesus Christ. And it is because I am a prove me kind of person. And so, uh, yeah, I started to write notes about this. Today, I was rushing home from hiking the dogs, trying to, I'm thinking, oh, I've got to put this sermon together. I've got to get my notes together before I present it to you. And the Holy Spirit said, do you really need notes to talk about the one that you love? When you're with your friends, do you need to go, oh, excuse me, let me pull out my notes because I want to tell you all the reasons why I'm so in love why I love this person. No, when you're in love, when you're really just dedicated, sold out to a man or a woman, you don't need to pull out a list of notes to be excited about it, to talk them up. So I'm just talking heart to heart. This is just raw from my heart to your heart, no notes. And um, just wanted to share with you, uh, there's so many reasons why I love Jesus Christ other than him dying on the cross for me, hello, and was buried and arose for me. Um, that's a big reason that he gave his life for me. That's enough reason just to love Jesus right there. Right, people? But there are so many other little things and big things that Jesus has done and said to me through, I mean, through life, that I'm just shocked and amazed that he just showed up and told me about himself. He has showed up and shown up. And uh, yeah, he's shown up big in my life. The one thing I want to share with you, again, I could be on here all night long and I'm going to honor your time, that what he did for me, he did such a miracle for me that there is no denying that there is a Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is for real. And for those of you who are of different faith and different religions, um, I'm not just talking from the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in Micah 5, describes the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and uh, you can read in Isaiah talking about Jesus. There are so many verses in the Old Testament that confirms that, yes, there was a baby born of a virgin that came out of Bethlehem. And, and it never mentions uh, Jesus as the Messiah, but it does say they, in, in the Old Testament, it talks about him as the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the Savior. Okay, and so I want you to check that out and look that up. But I wanted to share this quick why I love my Lord Jesus Christ so much. Um, about, and let me see, it was about the, it was in the late 80s. Um, yeah, late 80s. And I had, I've spoken to my church in LA about this, but I had discovered <clears throat> A, or my doctor, excuse me, uh, my gynecologist in L.A., she is the one that helped save my life. She's the one that brought this to my attention, but it was the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who healed me. My gynecologist, and I can just speak frank with you. I mean, we're adults here, and um, I think we all know about body parts. I'm not going to just bite my words the long and the short of it, and my right breast, I had developed a hard knot, a hard ball in my right breast that was about the size of a golf ball. I mean, it just like started developing and just like grew overnight. Some people call it a cyst. Some people call it a tumor. I knew for a fact it, and it started hurting. And so I've talked to enough cancer patients to know that usually by the time a cancerous uh, tumor is developed in your breast and it actually starts hurting, uh, it's, it's a little um, late. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, if you can catch it early enough, and before it starts to grow and develop, but I, I don't know if it was fear, I probably was, maybe denial, but this like golf, si golf ball sized tumor in my right breast, I mean, just grew and, and it wasn't soft. It was hard as a rock. So it wasn't a fat, fatty cyst. We're talking about a hardcore tumor and I knew I knew that it was for real. So my gynecologist, I booked an appointment, and of course she's doing the examination, and she's like, wow. Um, she's trying to be calm and cool, like doctors do. Uh, she said, we're gonna book you for a, uh, what do you call it, a biopsy. So I was scheduled to go in for a biopsy. And those of you who don't know what a biopsy is, they're, you know, I've never, you know, had to go through one, but those who have, they're not fun. They go in and take a piece of your breast tissue or the cancerous, the tumor or whatever it is, piece of the tumor or quote unquote cyst, and they send it off to the lab. This is a painful situation. And one of my dear friends in Florida just went through this. And uh, where they go in and they actually clamp off. I, I can't, I don't want to go into the details. You can look it up, what's involved in a biopsy of the breast. So I was scheduled to go in. And this gynecologist, I don't even know if she's still in business, but she was located in Reseda, which is in the Valley area of Los Angeles. And Reseda, I think it was at the Reseda Hospital uh, there um anyway those of you who are local know who i'm talking about what i'm talking about so her name was dr daryl alexander and like i said i don't know if she's still in practice um this lady was amazing so she's checking my breast saying we're going to schedule the biopsy <clears throat> so you can imagine 
I wasn't so fearful till she said that. Then I knew this was serious. And the more I thought about it, the worse it felt, the more pain. I, it was just so shocking and so hard to swallow. So I'm going to try to cut all this short. It was in a very emotional, sad, scary time for me. And I'm sorry for any of you ladies out there that have had to go through this, who have actually had um, a cancerous tumor in your breast, who has had a mastectomy or double mastectomy. I am so sorry. My heart is with you. Um, I'm sorry you've had to go through that. <clears throat> So, um, before I went in, now mind you, again, I told you I'm the daughter of an evangelist, my daddy, Lester Benton, and my precious mother, Earlene Benton, Sunday school teacher, faithful warrior. They put me on prayer list. They had the church praying. I was, I called and, and asked total strangers to pray for me. I was on prayer chains, prayer list, everywhere I could could be. And um, it just, let me tell you, I was on prayer chains across the world. And this big lump just was going nowhere. It was there. So the night before, I had such an appointment, such a divine appointment with the Lord Jesus Christ like I have never had before in my life. And I cried out. I cried out to God. I cried out to the Lord Jesus. I cried out and said, Lord, heal me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. Lord, heal me. And nothing was happening. Nothing. And so literally, I mean, this was, I, this went on for hours, hours. And I'm not kidding, all of a sudden, and then I, re I reached my right arm up to heaven. I reached my right arm up. And I placed my left hand in the area where it was right here in my breast. And I could feel the Holy Spirit, you know, telling me to get deeper, go deeper, go deeper, get intense, get intense, and just keep going. I prayed the most fervent prayer, and I'm not going to go into every detail about it. But it was then that the breakthrough happened. And I actually had and experienced a miracle. That's all I can tell you. Like, a, I mean, after probably two hours of just really getting face to face with Jesus Christ and crying out for a miracle. And listen, it didn't happen like right away. Sometimes you have to go deeper, spend more time, more hours with the Lord in prayer. And when I kept acknowledging Jesus as the Savior and asking a miracle for the Holy Spirit, for God to hit me with a miracle like that, a fireball came down. Mind you, I told you I had my right arm up to the Lord. A ball, it was like a ball of fire came straight down my arm, hit me right in my right breast. It was so intense. The heat was so hot. I just felt like I was burning up. And then whoo, all over my whole body like a hot furnace, like I had stepped, I was just stepping up into a fire. I mean, it was amazing. I've got the gooseys all over. And I mean, the intense fire that hit my body really squashed out and washed out. I mean, immediately like that. I'm going, what the, what in the world? And unfortunately... I was home alone because when something like this happens, you have to tell people and you, and you just, I really wanted to witness so badly to experience, wow, what I just went through. But see, God knew I was the only audience that was necessary because he knew that one day I would share it to an audience of thousands, millions across the world. And that is you. I mean, I had an instant healing.
but it didn't happen until I spent that intense time with the Lord, crying out to him for a miracle. And I have to share it with you right now. There's so much more. It was just such a euphoric feeling. I, it was the greatest high I had ever experienced in my entire life. That's the only way I can describe it. I was, I was just floating. I, I went to stand up. And literally, if I had not been sitting down on the sofa, I truly would have fallen down on my face. Because that lightning, that fireball that went down my arm, that miracle healing, it's a touch from God. God is known as a fire. And it was the healing power, the fire from God that came in and, and burned out all of the sickness, disease, burned out and hit that tumor that was in my right breast just like that. He is God, and, and I feel the Holy Spirit all over me. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is real. It doesn't happen just by believing in God the Father. God says, yes, that's great, but he wants you to acknowledge his son, Jesus Christ, the Savior. If you need a miracle, call out to Jesus Christ. He is the Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals and we need that. You need a God, the Father, who heals. You need to acknowledge Jesus, the Savior, and have the Holy Spirit inside. Because this was a true, quick healing. This was a miracle. And guess what? Not only was I supposed to share this with you for someone out there that needs a miracle. You need to get intense. Get back with Jesus. Reconnect with Jesus Christ. Spend hours, spend time with the one who can do something about your life. He can heal you. He can help you. He can guide you. But he wants you to get serious with him. He wants you to go back to him or to come to know him if you don't know him. Fast forward, went back to the doctor. I kept my biopsy appointment. I started to just call and cancel it because I'm like, wow, this, this is ridiculous for me to even go, but I had to show up. I had to show her that it was gone. And so when I get there, she, you know, they're like, Lee, put on your little gown, blah, blah, blah. They were getting all prepared. They were getting prepped for this intense biopsy. And so I said, uh, she comes in the room, you know, you have to have the gown open in the front. She starts examining. And I said, I've got to share something with you, doctor. It's not there. And she's like, yeah, right. Uh, no, she didn't go, yeah, right. But, you know, she was very classy, very dignified. And I go, you know, she's like, mm -hmm. okay, just lie back and let me check it. I said, I have to share it with you that I was totally healed, doctor. I was totally healed last night. And I got to witness to her. I got to tell her briefly, I gave her a brief outline, how what I just told you, how God intensely healed me and wiped out that tumor. And it was gone. It disappeared suddenly. So she's looking at me like, oh, okay. You know how people look at you like, that's nice but you know that they're thinking that's nice you're crazy or that's nice you're loco but I just kept telling her doctor you're gonna see it's gone I said I believe in miracles I've had people praying across the entire world and I prayed intensely and I didn't tell her all the details but however however she's like that's nice. Let's just check it out. So she told me to lay back, lie back, just lie down. I know she wanted me to just zip it. She was tired of me just going on and on raving how I was healed. She starts examining me and pushing quite hard, trying to find the tumor that was there. It was gone. She says, <clears throat> well, I said, I told you, doctor, it's gone. I have been healed. And she said, quote, unquote, well, it does seem to be gone. 
I said, it's disappeared. It is gone. Yeah, it does seem to be gone. Hmm, that's something. It does seem to be gone. I said, it is gone. I'm trying to tell you it's gone. And this is a miracle. So to this day, I still have no idea what she wrote in her charts. I don't know if she said miracle, tumor is gone, biopsy canceled. Um, I have no idea what she wrote in the charts. I'd like to see it one day. But all I know is that in heaven, God wrote miracle, Lee Benton healed from breast cancer, miracle given by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to share that with you because, yeah, time is of the essence. I've got to go. But I just wanted to share with you, there are so many reasons why I know. I don't just think, but I know that Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the Lord and King, and He wants a real relationship with you. Miracles can happen. He wants to love on you. He wants to go with you. He wants to make you his bride. No matter if you're a man or a woman, he calls you his bride. He wants to give you a breakthrough. This is one major reason why I call him my savior. This is why I know he's for real. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and you don't know he's for real, just give it a chance. Give him a chance. This is not something I'm trying to sell you. I can't. Only the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit can touch your heart. And I pray the Holy Spirit does open your heart and that you see that I'm not making this up. This is just facts. That this is just one of many miracles that the Lord is able to do every day. I want you to join me in prayer because the Lord gave me this RSVP prayer many years ago. And I want you to pray it with me right now. I want you. And if you've already prayed this prayer, then good on you. Then you need to rededicate your life. Come back to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, I'm sorry that I've gone far away from you. I'm sorry that I divorced you. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry that I broke up with you, but I want to be yours. I want you to be mine forever and ever. Keep me close to you, Lord. Let's pray this prayer, RSVP. No matter what religion, no matter what race, the Lord told me everyone needs to RSVP to heaven. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I want you to come in, redeem me, save me, help me, heal me, bless me. I love you, Lord. Please put my name in your book. Forgive me my sins as I make you my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.